Hi everyone, I'm Oliver and welcome back to Rosie Avery. So as bird breeders, generally we're always looking to sort out our birds for the next year and we're looking ahead for the next breeding season, which in this case is the 2022 breeding season. So I'm looking at the birds, deciding what I'm going to be keeping to supplement in my breeding for next year, what will be moving on, what surplus, and of course, how can we prepare the birds and everything else better for hopefully what should be a better breeding season the following year as we learn year on year. So in today's video we're going to be looking at my mule and hybrid pairs and as you've seen by the title and thumbnail of this video that's my bullfinch mule and hybrid pairs. The birds we're going to be looking at today we've got four bullfinch uh, mule slash hybrid pairs and we've got a different pair of mules to look at so that's five pairs in total for this video and for next year so i think we should get right to it and take a look just before we jump into the video if you are interested in a t-shirt like this please drop me a message on instagram facebook drop me an email and just express your interest <laughs> So for those of you that maybe haven't been in the hobby that long, you want to know what is a mule and what is a hybrid, what's the difference? So a mule is a, a crossbred bird in which one parent is a canary and the other is a finch. For example, you might have a red polecock with a canary hen, then you're trying to breed red poll mules. Maybe you have a green finch hen with a canary cock, and it's again green finch mules. So you get the idea is that a canary has to be one of the parents and a finch is the other parent. So hybrids are a bit different than that. Hybrids are a finch and another finch of two different species so whenever and you know technically the mules are hybrids uh, from a scientific standpoint uh, but for just differentiating in the hobby a mule is a canary parent and a, a finch parent and a hybrid is a finch and a finch for example a bullfinch with a green finch or a linnet with a siskin they're, they're going to be, you're aiming to breed hybrids. So that's just a quick overview for the viewers that might not know that. And it always is useful to know if you are looking to show your birds is that there'll be mule and hybrid categories to make sure you put your birds in the correct class. Previously, you've seen in my video of bringing some new birds in from Stafford, we brought in three uh, native bullfinch hens and two native bullfinch cocks, as well as we bred a Siberian bullfinch hen and we brought in a few different things. So the bullfinches are going to be what's making up the hybrids uh, and, and mule pairs for next year. Um, especially if you've been in the hobby a while you'll know that bullfinch mules and hybrids are some of the most extraordinary beautiful looking mules and, and hybrids that you can get uh, that you know the, just the red from the bullfinch it makes an absolutely cracking bird uh, i absolutely love them i've wanted to try them for a while and now it looks like this year's uh, hopefully you know it, we, we've got four pairs so hopefully it all goes well so we're going to have a look at the pairs we've got four pairs i've said so we're going to look at the native uh, bullfinch pairs first then we're going to look at the uh, siberian bullfinch hen pair you know for the mule hybrids and then we're going to look at the other mule pair and then i'm going to give you a bit of information on for example why don't bullfinch cocks fill eggs um other than with bullfinch hens why can't you mule or hybrid with a bullfinch cock and a bit more information on that so let's look at this pair first so this is the first pair we're going to look at, um, the, the first bullfinch hybrid pair. Now we've got our 2021 uh, native bullfinch hen and, and what I did is, is purposefully chose the, uh, the smallest bullfinch hen. Now there's not much difference between the three of the natives, uh, they're all sisters. Uh, so they're genetically very close and um, it, it was just the smallest of the three that I felt would best suit the finch that she's in with and that finch is a red pole. Uh, we bred this cockbird this year and I have that uh, DNA sexed by Avigenics as well so that's worked out really quite well in that we've got a, a, a I'm quite certain it's a guaranteed cockbird because it has been DNA'd as well as showing that red through the chest even though it is a current year bird. So we've got, you know, we've got two young birds together and I think that's going to give us the best chance in that they've not bred before so they don't have that uh, attachment and uh, recognition of their own species as, as much as potential mates as they would if it was an over year bird in this case. 
Um, ideally, uh, what you know, it, it is a tr you do want uh, current year birds to be paired with anyway. So that's worked out quite nice for me. It nice for nicely for me in um, you know with, with this. I think the the bullfinch hen's a cracking bird. She's got some good colour to her. I'd say she's a yellow bird as well. Um, she's she's got that. I guess you could say almost a half chocolate brown uh, as we look for in 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 bullfinches, especially you know in the bullfinch hens. It's quite common in the uh, the Irish bullfinches, but as a, an English native bullfinch hen, I think this is quite a fine example. She will be going to the shows this year. We're going to do one uh, one bully hen at a time and just see how they perform. Uh, but that's my first bullfinch hybrid pair. Uh, this been some cracking examples bred over the years I've seen photos of I know uh, uh, two or three people have bred some lovely ones this year as well uh, I know there's one at Cajun Avery a few years ago that was an absolutely stunning example of uh, a, 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 a red pole bully so really looking forward to seeing how this pair go now as always with mills and hybrids they are challenging they do make you cry because they are very difficult to breed um, but I just thought, you know, it, it is a, a bully mule, sorry, a bully hybrid anyway. The red poles generally are, you know, do fill eggs quite readily. Uh, they, they are quite easy to keep fit. So I just thought it'd be a good, good opportunity to take, you know, to take with uh, a, a, a smaller hybrid of the bullfinches. The, the cock bird, the red pole cock, he's well marked as well on the flanks. So I'm kind of hoping that that will add to the hybrid if we hopefully do manage to produce some so if it does have any visible markings there will be good um he's a is a, as a generally a, a well-shaped bird he's not as cobby as i would have liked if i could have got a bigger cobby a bird i would have uh, but i do think that it, it should hopefully produce as a good mule with even though it's a smaller bully hen she's got some really good shape to her so i do think hopefully they should click and get on quite well now i'm going to talk a bit more about this later on how i'm going to bond them but what i've done is i've just literally got two purchases in one either end just for the, the the moment in the short term um and just getting them to know each other i'm giving them treats so they're getting uh, things in egg food drawers or egg food uh, finger drawers and and just trying to bond them that way but as i said we're, we're pairing them in in, in october to be aiming for sort of April. So we've got a good six months before we, we look to even take them to nest yet. So that's the first pair. It's a native, uh, so it's a, a lesser red pole cock with a native English bully hen. So this is our next pair of uh, bullfinch hybrids uh, and it's actually a bully mule uh, which is which is the idea we're going for here now you're probably going to recognize the bird at the front here that is the clear white 75 percent norwich we brought in from stafford from the robertson jones uh, norwich partnership now that's a, that's a fantastic looking bird although it is a 75 percent norwich it is slightly smaller than uh, the standard Norwich. The idea of this was to give basically a, a canary Norwich-like Norwich feather quality and very similar in size and head size and everything like that to a Norwich, but have a bit more stamina and a bit more lightness about it than the Norwich and hopefully a bit more of a drive to to breed and fill eggs uh, than would uh, a pure 100% Norwich. And that, that was the main idea of, of using um, a 75% Norwich as opposed to a purebred Norwich, uh, but also a clear white. And the reason being for that, uh, to put with a, a, a native bully hen, was because I think, and I'm hoping I'll be right in saying this, is that by using a clear, and, and especially it being a white bird, is that it will give rise to a, an opportunity. Uh, and I believe it's a 50% split in breeding normal, hybrids so or normal mule so a normal canary bully but also blue uh, a blue canary bully now this is something that uh, as far as I've I've searched records for I can't find any evidence um, and, and any documentation of, 
as proof of bleeding bull, uh, a blue canary bully prior uh, to, to me having this, you know, going for an attempt at it. I have spoken to a few champion breeders as well, of which uh, have no recollection of a, uh, a blue canary bully being bred. So that's, uh, that's one of the aims for next year, is not only to try and produce a canary bully, which is a challenge in itself, but also if we could get a blue canary bully out, I would love to have a, you know have my name down on the record books for that, as well as um, you know ju just managing to try and breed something from them anyway. So, like I've said anyway, they are challenging. You could have a year where you don't produce anything from them, or or two years. Uh, but I think if I was to run this pair for three years and I got one blue canary bully, I think that would you know I'd be happy. And anything more than that. Uh, you know would be outstanding and, and, and even better so we've paired them early we have gone for a flight of cockbear with this is the 75% the, the Norwich uh, and the reason being for that is that with, with it being part Norwich I'm hoping that having it have, although it has previously bred with a canary the idea is that if it kind of knows how to do its job because it is a, a big bird it should hopefully give us that bit of an increased chance and we've paired them early anyway, you know, we've paired them in October. So I'm hoping that by by the point that we expect to see them breeding, at least the hen going down to nest uh, in sort of April, May time, he will have been run with the, the, the bully hen for several months, you know, six months probably at the least before he's expected or hoping to fill an egg. And I'm kind of hoping the pair within that time will have flipped. Now, something to note with this pair, as you can see, is that they're sat on the same perch. And at least when you usually introduce pairs, they can take a few weeks to just acclimatise and get used to each other before they're even doing that, as you're going to see with the next pair of birds that we've got to look at, the next bully uh, mule hybrid pair. So this is a good sign. I'm hoping that with a bit more, you know, with a bit of, um, bit of luck, Hopefully the pair will click, hoping they'll start feeding each other, and if they do, I'd, I'd really like to be on for a winner with this pair. So I'll keep you updated, of course, as we go throughout the, the autumn, and as we go into spring, you know, go through winter, and we go into spring, and just hoping that it all goes well, and uh, I'll, I'll try my best, and I'll keep everyone updated with the, pair, the pair's progress. Now this is the last native bullfinch hybrid pair uh, which I've, I've done and this is a common crossbill cock to a native bully hen. So I, I had spoken to a, a good friend about this, um, you know, what very well experienced, fancy and what um, about bully hybrids and he'd, he'd recommended rather than doing the, um, the, the crossbill would be to try a greenie so I, I was definitely going to go for that that was my overall plan however uh, the, the, the green finch which I'd selected out just it wasn't up to the standard I was hoping it would be um, to put to that or, it's, or at least it's not at the moment and what I don't want to do is do it essentially a half-hearted attempt with a, a greenie that's not as good as, as I was hoping. I could do one of the other greenies we've got, one of the better birds, but I'd rather bring some straight greenies off of them. So what we've opted out for, and to be fair, I can't say I'm sad because it'll be, hopefully, if we can manage to get one, a lovely hybrid, and that's a common crossbill cock instead. We had this bird, uh, this bird this year, we didn't breed anything off him sadly because it, although he was in with a, a crossbill hen and then a greenfinch hen, he didn't fill any eggs. He's, he's a 2020 bred bird so he is still young, especially for crossbill standards, they, they do last quite a while. Uh, you know, they can breed until 8, 9, 10 years old and I've heard some people have had them. So that's what I've done with this pair. Um, I am kind of hoping that with the crossbill cock anyway being a bit older, he should, and not bred, he'll have maybe a bit more of an idea of, of what he's doing, uh, although he's not bred previously, and I'm just hoping with a bit, a bit of maturity he will pair to this hen uh, a lot more readily, as I, I have been told by an awful lot of breeders is that the crossbill mules and hybrids are renowned for being one of the most challenging anyway, because the crossbills do take time to uh, 
get accustomed and get get used to the the, the bird they're going to be breeding with. Uh, however, you know that's that's generally not all the time, and and, and I think proof of that can be. I've got a good friend anyway who um, he, he had a crossbill cock off a, a, another friend. I, I just curried it up for him as I was getting some other bits. And uh, he put that in with a mealy red pole hen uh, and he paired them in March. In the May, I believe, he had six crossbill red pole hybrids hatch. So the pair owned it together six to eight weeks and he had six hybrids hatch in one nest, I believe. However, sadly, they didn't make it to the sticks, they didn't make it past a few days old as the hen then refused to feed them for whatever reason. But that's, you know, that's besides the point. We'll, we'll focus on this pair for the moment. So crossbill crossbill bully there's some fantastic examples of these have been bred over the years uh notably i know mark slowly has bred some fantastic um you know birds out of, of this hybrid uh, not only with the common crossbill but i believe the parrot crossbill the two barred crossbill and the scottish crossbill so i'm really looking forward to see how we do with this pair if if the green finch does improve then i might you know i probably will do a bit of a change with that anyway uh, and, and maybe we go for a native bully cross uh, cross green finch instead um, of the crossbill just because I do know this is a very challenging pair and I've been very lucky to to breed anything from them but to make some nice hybrids and I'm up for the challenge so we'll give it a go and I'm gonna have to hope that we might get something what I've done for this pair is because we've got a crossbill, they are active birds, they're, they're quite often very busy, they're always chewing, so as you can see I've put an apple branch just hung down from uh, the cage front and what have you, and, and that's just to keep try and keep the crossbill cock off the perches um, from chewing them at least, because what he has been doing is pulling one of the perches out completely at the bottom, and my next fear is that he'll learn how to uh, lift the doors on the, the cage, which they are, you know, they have been known to do prior, not only here, but in a lot of other breeders, uh, setups, and some even escape. Um, so it's just something to, be aware of is that they can do that so what i thought is we can try and keep him busy with an apple branch to chew to pieces uh, and i can quite easily replenish that with fresh ones uh, to keep him to keep him happy keep him busy so yeah um something with this pair to note as well is that they aren't sat on the same perch and they have only been paired a few weeks uh, but the, yeah they, they do they do take time to get used to each other and i'm hoping that with, with the pair over, you know, with pairing them together now and having a good six months or what to 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 bond. Hopefully by that point we'll get, you know, we'll, we'll get a nice pair going. Hopefully they'll feed each other, and I just hope, fingers crossed, that we might manage to produce something from this pair, which would be a miracle, but would be, you know, would be a real real treat. So that's the three native bullfinch pairs and obviously something to, to note with these is that we're using only hens and not the cockbirds and I'm going to explain that to you once we've had a look at the other two pairs. So we're going to next go to the other bird room and we're going to take a look at what I've done with the Siberian bully hen and then we're going to come back in here just to look at a mule pair that I've put uh, put aside we're gonna we're gonna keep them together over winter and i'm sure we'll have room for them next year but if not they might be something that uh, i'll lend to a friend to have a go with or maybe we try them we, maybe we try them elsewhere but let's go and have a look at the siberian bully hybrid we're going to be trying for next year this is our uh, siberian bullfinch hybrid pair we've got uh, for next year. So we bred the Siberian Bully this year uh, and we did breed the Greenfinch as well. This Greenfinch is a quality bird, however, it's not a bird I'm looking to take to the shows just because it's not just, yeah, it's not quite at the level of its three brothers, but it's, it's still a, a, a very, very nice bird, uh, not only in the colour uh, but the shape, it's just slightly smaller, but I think the colour does, you know, does really do do good things for this bird anyway so the greeny bully hybrid is something that it's since the start of me looking to breed native birds 
uh, was something that I wanted to do. I think it was the first bully hybrid that I saw and I, I absolutely fell in love with it. So it's been something I wanted to try for uh, you know the, the last few years. And we finally got to a point where I, I, I now have the facilities and, and, and the stock to have an attempt and hope to breed it. So one of the ideas of using uh, a Siberian bully as opposed to the native, although I did want to try um, the, 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 the greening with a native bully as well, which we might do in, instead of the cross belt, still up in the air at the moment, um, is that they, they do nearly match in size, both the green finch and the Siberian bully. So what you need to do is breed as a, a rather large hybrid. And I think that that's something, although it, could, it would have to go in the Northern classes and it could only win Northern awards, uh, it's not always the exhibition. You know, as much as that is a massive focus and, and, and an idea of what I, I breed for is that it is, you know, trying to get that bird for the exhibition. But if you can get something as well that's a, a, a cracking example of the hybrid and, you know, of what it's supposed to look like. And, you know, not only that, but a bird I love, then and that's, that's equally as... Uh, important to me as well so it will be going to you know if we do manage to breed one which i just hope we do uh, fingers crossed for that then uh, it, you know it, it'll be going to the shows anyway because i'm hoping it'll make a nice it would make a nice bird uh, but yeah there you are so i'm just kind of thinking that with the size matching in that you'll get a really rather large hybrid bred from a pair like this um the colour of the greeny it, it is good and I do think you probably need that for uh, especially the Siberians if you're using the Siberian bully because they are um, generally not as rich in colour as the natives so by using it, it what I've got is a yellow green finch cockbird I do think that that's going to make the difference as opposed to if I was using a buff green finch cock because I do think you get uh, a bit of a duller hybrid than, than you would hope uh, so I'm, I think this is quite a well-matched pair and should work out nicely. So what I've done is I've put them in a different bird room from the natives uh, just to keep the, 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 the bully hen... Well, I, so I, I know which one it, she is anyway. She's massive, uh, but just to keep them away from the other native hens. Uh, and I, I've put them in a larger a larger cage, as you can see. So the other, the other pairs are in uh, about 24 to 30 inch long. Uh, double breeding cages um, whereas this pair is in uh, sort of a, a, an indoor bird room fly it's seven feet uh, front to back uh, well, uh, side to side the front to back is about 18 inch and it's three foot high so plenty of room to keep them fit although I might be looking to take the northern bird to the shows uh, she, she might get a run out once or twice but overall I'm think more thinking that uh, to get this pair hopefully bonded a, a, a bigger a bigger flight like this would be good not only you know keeping them both fit and i do think that's important with this green finch because it is a rather large bird and um, and it does need that extra help uh, when it comes to if he does try and fill those eggs which i very much hope he does and um, green finches on especially green finch cocks they don't readily breed uh, and, and, and bond as well to other species as i've been told and, and, and read in several books on on breeding british birds mules and hybrids so you know it is a challenge that we've got to overcome there with the greeny cock but it's the only way you can do the hybrid as i mentioned you can't do it with bully bully cocks um i just think you know hopefully it does make a nice pair and as well is that something with um the, the greeny cocks is that, that although they've not got as much drive to hybridize as it so i've read um is that if you can make it easier for them obviously it's it, it's something you need to do so i think by also having a, a, a larger bully hen which is the siberian it's got a larger vent so in that case when it does come to hopefully mate with a it should stand out you know it should be a bit easier for him uh, and as well with with the siberian bullies having the temperament they do and you know being renowned for being easier to produce mules and hybrids with uh, compared to the native english bullies i'm hoping that you could even see nests uh, you know um, nests of these rather than maybe single youngsters in a nest uh, so that that would be nice and 
I, all I can do is hope and pray, keep my fingers crossed for next year that we might produce something from this pair. You know, I, 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 I'm always looking, you know, and hoping for the best, uh, but but well aware of, of what could happen with, with mules and hybrids and what is often the case is that you don't produce anything because they are you know, renowned for being difficult. So hopefully you like this pair. I think it's a lovely pair and we'll see how they get on over the next few months. I've not seen them feeding each other yet, not have I seen any of the mule and hybrid pairs feeding each other yet, but they've been paired at most two weeks. So plenty of time for them to bond and hopefully get to that point. So if there is anyone out there watching this video who doesn't like bullfinch mules and hybrids, then hopefully this pair is for you because this is, doesn't include a bullfinch. What I've got here is uh, two over year birds we've previously attempted um, with, well, not with each other, but uh, same species. We've got a, a, a clear yellow Norwich hen with a, a native goldfinch cock. Now, both of these birds have bred this year. Um, however, sadly, well, the, the yellow Norwich hen was in with a, a lovely goldfinch cock who sadly passed away in the molt. She had several full eggs with that bird, however, sadly none of them hatched. Uh, you know, they didn't make it to, to, to that point dead in shell. Uh, but for the goldfinch cock, he was with a buff, um, a buffed 10% uh, variegated Norwich hen this year, uh, this past spring season. And they produced us a, a, a goldfinch mule. We bred two of them, we had them fostered out, sadly only one did make it to adulthood and, and she's uh, she's turned out a nice bird to be fair she will be going to the shows this year too um, and uh, you know once you've had that show train and what so we're going to try a golden mule pair again and, and although it is one of the the, the ones that is renowned for being a, a, a bit of an easier one to produce uh, nevertheless that i think you, you know it can be an easy bird to produce and, and, and breed one but to get a good one is another challenge so i'm hoping that by using a norwich anyway you're going to be breeding those exhibition mules using a yellow norwich you know with it being a yellow feathered intensive feathered bird it's going to hopefully breed you those yellow feathered mules that you want and they're much better in color much more solid and by having this these two paired early now i'm kind of hoping that by the time it comes to the breeding season probably april for this pair you know that the, the, the norwich will be ready by april she was uh start of april this year she did get ready for me or even it could have been even earlier it could have been mid-march and um, but for the goldfinch generally may in captivity uh generally uh, what i found at least when i bred um Gold, well, I've tried to breed goldfinches and goldfinch mules is that April is the sort of time that generally will come into condition. It's going to depend on what the weather's like as well, but we'll see. So that's a goldy mule uh, pair as well. So that should that should hopefully make a nice pair. I think that the, the two nice birds, they I have seen them feed each other, even though they have been together a few weeks. I'd say that's mainly due to them being familiar with each other's generally with each other anyway in terms of yeah the goldie's been with the norwich hen before and the norwich hen's been with the goldie before just not these two together so we'll see how they get on um over over the winter months uh, i'll probably move them to a different cage anyway they're just in there for the moment while i've been messing around with with red poles choosing which is staying and which are going to uh, who's going to the shows for me and and, and so forth but they'll, they'll get a different cage relatively soon and we'll keep them in, in one of those over winter and we'll see how they get on so as always, what I've had to do is I've, I've made my pair up. I, I pretty much knew how many pairs of mules and hybrids I wanted to do for next year. Um, and I know how much room I'm supposed to have for next year anyway, uh, and where youngsters are going to be going. I don't want to overdo it. I don't want to have too many pairs because it's not only unmanageable, but also if they do all click, which can sometimes happen, uh, you're going to end up with an awful lot of young and possibly could overflow and I don't want that to happen, don't want to have too much. So what I've got is I've got the four bully mule hybrid pairs and we've got our golden mule pair as well. So what my idea is, is because of the native bullfinch temperament, they are a bit more bouncy uh, than the Siberians and generally harder to breed they're each going to be getting a flight uh, so i'm going to be putting them out in the, the largest of the flights we've got 
they're going to be going in there each pair of, of hybrids or mules and we're going to see how they get on there and i'm hoping this should work out all right which would be good um not only does it keep both the, the, the cock and the hen fit uh, it gives them plenty of room to get away from each other should they need it plenty of room for me giving them multiple nest sites because sometimes uh, a nest site can be the decider of whether you're going to get full eggs and i'm not kidding when i say uh, I've had red poles have that where they've had a, a clear eggs in a, a nest pan but they've nested on the floor and had full eggs. It happens uh, and it, you know, it happened this year. Um, so I'm going to make sure there's always you know, two or three options for them uh, and, uh, and just try and make them as comfortable as possible to give me the best chance of producing uh, a bully mule or canary bully. So that'd be great. Uh, as for the Siberian, well, the Siberian bully with the, the the green finch cock i did want to give them a flight and they're still i mean, i'm still debating that whether maybe i do maybe canary bully in a cage and greeny bully outside but i do think because we've got a siberian bully hen they're more docile the temperament's different than a native I think they'll probably benefit best from going in a cage so what they're going to get is uh it won't be the top cage i don't think i think i'll do them in a bottom cage where it's a bit quieter um is give them one of these cages but we'll remove the floor as i've done with the, the, the pair for the crop the crossbow bully which they're in at the moment and we'll just just give them that to go in uh for breeding because i think the bully hen will she'll go down in there no problem and i'm hoping that i can also supplement a bit more for the green finch because i know he, even if he was outside the flight he'd probably have a little bit more of a problem filling eggs than than the other pairs so i can always make sure he's getting the the new the, the vitamins he needs and everything like that and i think the control there would probably be a bit better so that's my overall idea the golden mule pair they'll they'll probably go in one of these cages the wire cages for next year or maybe i'll put them in in the other bird room not not too sure yet but doesn't matter we've got plenty of time to work that out um and I, I know how many pairs I can have next year for where I'm planning to have the young birds, uh, which will probably be the other bird room anyway. That's what I'll just have that as a young bird room. So it'll be ideal for next year. So I now need to talk to you about uh, the bullfinch cocks and why uh, exactly they don't uh, fill the eggs. Um, of of other species, uh, yet a, a bully hen can breed with a red pole, a canary, a crossbill, a greenie, a linnet, you know. So I'll, um, well, I might as well tell you just a bit more how that works. So if you are interested in further reading on how this works, I can leave some links in the description, uh, but it, I would just definitely say it's best to go on Google and look at this, unless you have access to something like Web of, Web of Science, or you can even use Google Scholar to look at these uh, articles, and the scientific articles. So I'll have to give you a bit of a, a quick overview of how it works and uh, simplify. So basically, with a bullfinch cock sperm, um, the morphology, which is the shape of the sperm, is different to uh, general other sort of uh, passerine species like the red pole so in a red pole the sperm is a bit more of a pointed head whereas in the bullfinch it's more rounded so that does show that there's less competition so when that sperm comes to burrow into the egg of the the, the female bullfinch or whatever it's mating with there's clearly a lack of competition in that and it's also um backed up by the the, the bullfinch cock has a very small pair of testes um you know in uh, uh, compared to the size of the body um, when you look at something else so a bullfinch cock's very small testes also shows a lack of sperm competition and um, which just means that basically the interbreeding they've probably gone a bit further out in evolution uh, and so forth so that that's the, that's the main reason being and and therefore when it comes to a bullfinch cock and why it's not filling the eggs the, the sperm's differently um shaped so it's it, it doesn't burrow into the egg as easily and um, it does have a different overall shape anyway with a few other bits but it's a bit too much in detail for what we need to talk about um and clearly um the, the, you know the sperm production is, is less frequent you know is less so overall that the the overall sperm count of the bird you know the the, the small numbers of, uh, of of sperm going towards that egg compared to the amount that maybe a red pole would release uh, you know it is very different so overall the bullfinch cock 
will at least struggle is the best way of saying it um, with, with it. And it, it, although it is possible, probably because you've got you know bully hens can crossbreed, so they can crossbreed in that sense and and hybridise, um, but. The bullfinch cock just at least at the moment hasn't been known to fill eggs of any other species other than the the, the, the bullfinch hen and that's with the uh, pirilla pirilla um, bullfinch not anything else like an azores bullfinch as far as i'm aware so the eurasian bullfinch uh, so that's just a bit of an idea on that for you guys hopefully you found that useful um, and a bit more information on why a bullfinch cock won't fill those eggs and if you all are interested on in some further reading go on google scholar if you've got web of science go on web of science i get access to that through uni anyway um, or if not just go on google and i'm sure you know there's some easily accessible links and um articles as to exactly why this is and hopefully you can learn a bit more and understand exactly why it doesn't work so then finally just before we do end this video is that about the the, the overall bonding of the birds how am i going to bond them and how i'm going to increase those chances now generally the, obviously the first way is introducing the pair and having them together and um, some breeders like to have a wire divider between them to stop the aggression if they do start to fight uh, so what i did uh, to begin with although i didn't have a divider is i made sure they're in the vicinity of each other for a few days so they're, they're at least used to the sounds um because sometimes and i'm not joking is that they can they can uh literally the, the the call of a different bird like maybe if they would respond to a hawk can be slightly daunting to them so i've I, i've made sure that at least are used to the sounds which each other make uh, and then from that point um it's just a case of putting them together and just keeping a close eye on them making sure they're not battering each other you're always going to get that bit of aggression with them but well, that's expected with any birds or any species is that when you introduce two things even if it's dogs they might not get on at, at first and and that was expected and that did happen is they did have a few little squabbles but after a few days everything calmed down and they're just living in the same uh, cage generally without a problem uh, so the next thing is is that at least when i first introduced them for the week was given them two uh, water you know, two drinkers and two different feeding sites so in case one bird did get overprotective or you know you, you know um aggressive around that you're know, protective of the of the nest the, of the food pot or whatever which does happen uh, that the other one had access to that so that worked well um however not you know not 100 percent always needed but something i do just as an in case rather than losing the bird through something unnecessary like that especially if it's something like a bullfinch hen that's really not easily replaceable uh and you know and, and there's not many about so that that's that and then then as it goes for so egg food drawers and um, finger drawers putting little bits in for them so things that aren't necessary in terms of they don't need it to, to live and thrive and um, but they'll they're they'll they'll, they'll, they'll readily accept it so mealworms conditioning seed which they don't need right now you know for you know getting them in breeding condition they don't need right now but they do accept it quite quite well egg food germinated seed lettuce wild seed anything anything like that to bring the birds together and get them interacting as well just helps um i found that worked well for me last year especially with the siskin red pole hybrid pair they didn't get on at first and it took them two or three months just to get used to each other when i first introduced them but by giving them that millet to both cling on to and eat at giving them those mealworms uh, they slowly you know got used to each other just being there together sharing sharing things like that and then overall it did lead to the success and we did breed for some this year although we did lose them before they jumped the nest because of a, a freak accident with fireworks uh, and, and i will cover that uh next week anyway uh, with fireworks and how to get through that because it's bonfire night in a few weeks and, and you're going to end up with fireworks all the time so it's really annoying but we'll cover that in a later video so that's just how i'm going to hopefully bond them and, and and just try and increase the chance as best i can and we'll we'll talk about different things as we progress throughout the year 
Um, for example, when we're, breed, when we're building them up with fertility vitamins, we want to increase fertility. When we are getting them in breeding condition or they are breeding, we do want fertility vitamins and supplements and all sorts of things like that. So we'll cover that in uh, some later videos later on, uh, probably next year, so early next year. Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video today. Um, I, I hope you enjoy, uh, you know, I hope you like the birds that we've paired up uh, for the ideas of the mules and hybrids. And I hope you like actually the examples I've showed you of a few that have been produced over over the past few years and what have you. Uh, some stunning examples on there. And, uh, you know, I, I'd love to have a chat with all the breeders, but it's just one of those things where you've just got to get get round it all. Um so four four bully uh, well three bully hybrid pairs a bully mule pair and a golden mule pair is the plan for next year so make sure if you want to see more of that you're following along so make sure you subscribe down below and if you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more smash the like button just before i go guys if you can if you do want a t-shirt like this just drop me a message and i've got a plan uh, coming up for christmas to give back to you guys uh, and, and a bit bit more engagement between myself and, and you guys as well and also if you are at newark show on sunday then i will see you there thank you very much for watching everyone i'll see you in the next video